Speaking of weird boys, you know, there's lots of weird conspiracy theories out there nowadays. I know uh, Trump has ordered the release of several government documents related to the Kennedy assassination. And uh, that kind of got us thinking a little bit about um, the conspiracy theories that exist in the hockey world. So in this segment, we're calling it Unmasked, and we're going to delve a little deeper into hockey's little-known stories of intrigue and secret societies. So our first story actually comes from one of our investigative reporters, Connor Morrison. He does a lot of digging around on a lot of our stories, actually, so credit to him. To sum it up very quickly, the whole game is rigged. The it's, whole thing. Yeah, from yep. top to bottom, the winners, the losers, the scoring champions. The fix is in. Yeah, the fix is yeah, in. Yeah, this was shocking. Yeah, this is way down the rabbit hole. But, I mean, it seems to check out. And it's surprising how far back this goes. Yeah, it goes really far back. Yeah. So it's an organization, they're called the Brotherhood of the Blade. Uh, this actually originates back to the times of Lord Stanley, and he was, of course, the Governor General of Canada, the man who was responsible for the Stanley Cup being brought over to Canada. And he was a part of his own organization called the Order of Bards, Druids, and Cricketeers. Uh, another member of that group, uh, his name was Archibald Smith, a wealthy felter from a wealthy felting empire family, uh, they had a bit of a falling out and he actually moved to Canada and he actually set up this Brotherhood of the Blade modeled after this other organization that he had left. And then he had three sons um, named Alf, Tommy and Harry Smith and they continued on his work in Ottawa for the Ottawa Hockey Club and uh, about the time they arrived on the scene they reeled off, was it 11 championships? That's right, 11 Stanley Cups. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, much to the chagrin of Lord Stanley, I'm sure, who, who was not a fan of the Smith clan at all. But by that point, he'd pretty much been muscled out and he was no longer in the scene. And right around that time, the Smith clan was influential in setting up the National Hockey League as the premier hockey league in North America. That's right, they strong-armed the old WHL out. That's right. And became the number one hockey league in North America. Yeah, it was a bit of a hostile takeover. Absolutely. And since then, the captain of every single championship team, the coach... All of the main referees, the general managers, they've all been members of this organization, the Brotherhood of the Blade. Yeah, they meet every summer in a place not too far from Peterborough called Scugog Island. They do a retreat out there once a summer, and they've got a lodge where they apparently have all kinds of rituals and they initiations. Yeah. yeah, some pretty bizarre stuff I've heard. Yeah. Now, I, I believe it's Wayne Gretzky who's, who's one of the grand wizards of this organization. That's right. And there's a story out there about him bringing a young Connor McDavid, 15-year-old Connor McDavid. Yeah, when he was out. 15 years old. Yeah, yeah, and he joined right away. And, I mean, I think he's probably going to win a few Stanley Cups now in his career. Yeah, well, I think it's predestined if this is the case. And we learned uh, that there were a few holdouts. Yeah, among them is Jerome McGinley. One of the most controversial Stanley Cup moments is probably that of the 2004 Stanley Cup Final and the Game 6 goal that was disallowed by as a Martin Gell in a goal. And if you look at the replay, it's pretty obvious that was a goal. And to this day, a lot of people really scratch their heads over how that goal was not allowed. Now, when viewed in the context of Jerome McGinley refusing to join this organization, I think things seem to make a little more sense now, don't they? Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff makes sense. That's why the story is so compelling, because when you look at events through the prism of this, suddenly things become very clear. And another member that just joined this past summer, a bit of a coincidence maybe, but uh, Steven Stamkos, that is uh, the captain of the team who is currently first in the NHL. That's right, some photographs were released online, um, which seemed to suggest that he was uh, in and around Scugog Island. Yeah, there was one where he was walking arm in arm with Sidney Crosby on their way into a limo. Yeah, so we're going to keep uh, digging on this story. Connor's working on it. I'm sure there's a lot more that we can find out. Um, so we'll keep you posted. Conspiracy theory that we came across 
involves a certain hockey legend and perhaps unsurprisingly, Russia. Yeah, so one of our tech guys, uh, he goes by the handle Timo V. King. Uh, he's got some ties to the dark web and he was poking around the other day and he unearthed this crazy story about Yarmir Yager. Now, as you all may remember, Yarmir Yager spent uh, three years playing in the KHL. Now, during that time, he was invited to participate in one of these Vladimir Putin celebrity hockey games. Um, basically an excuse for Putin to, to flex his muscle, show off his skills, and everybody lets him do whatever the hell he wants out there. He scores some goals and looks like a real big man. Well, Yager had other ideas, so he actually turned the tables on Putin, uh, stick-handled around him, made him look like a little boy out there, and just made him look like a goof, really. He scored a bunch of goals. Putin was not impressed at all. He had footage of that game destroyed, made everyone in attendance swear that they would not utter a word of this great embarrassment. Yeah, and we can really start to connect the dots on this one. Uh, it's no surprise that Yager wasn't willing to play ball with Putin. Let's not forget that Yager always wore number 68. He wore it throughout his entire career, and it was commemorating uh, the Prague Spring in 1968. That's when his grandfather died the same year. He was thrown in prison by the Soviet government for resisting the collectivization of his farm. So Yager has never been a big fan of Russia, and I'm sure he derived a lot of joy from uh, putting Putin to shame on the ice. Yeah, and that's the whole thing with this tournament, is it was kind of this moment where Yager was supposed to bow down and kiss the ring, and instead he smacked Putin right upside the head. Well, this is when things really get crazy. So after the game, Yager disappears. Uh, his team cited personal reasons. Uh, he went missing for two weeks. And in that time, it's alleged that Yarmir Yager was actually tortured. They cloned him and then killed him. And that the man now playing in the NHL is not Yarmir Yager, but is a clone of Yarmir Yager. And yeah. the man himself died in the year 2010. Yeah, he's bounced around the NHL since he's come back, and there's even a story about him being in Calgary right now. Well, yeah, he's a, he's now a, a tool of the Russian government. He's a KGB operative, and he's now in Calgary because Calgary is the headquarters of the oil and gas industry in Canada. And as we all know, Russia is a major player in the oil and gas game, and they've been poking around the Arctic, and they're really interested in the oil and gas reserves up in northern Canada. So they're just looking to get some intel right now, and Yager is the perfect excuse for that. Yeah, who wouldn't, who wouldn't want to talk with Yarmir Yager? Yeah, he's the perfect mole. I mean, men and women alike, right, would love to, to share something with Yarmir Yager. Yeah, so if you're down on Electric Avenue in Calgary and uh, Yarmir Yager starts chatting you up and you work in the oil and gas industry, just politely change the yeah, topic, please, be careful with for the good of our nation. Yeah. Shocking stuff. It is, and we had a lot of stories, but actually this is just the tip of the iceberg. You guys remember that uh, mumps epidemic oh, from a yeah. few years ago? Oh, yeah. oh, that struck the NHL? Yeah, where yeah. a lot of players came down with the, with the mumps. Well, there was some foul play behind the scenes. Now, we don't have all the story straight quite yet. We're not ready to run with it, but uh, by the time we have our next episode, we should be ready okay. to yeah. divulge we'll a little more. We'll save that for the next one of Unmasked. Yeah, Unmasked. It's a, we're digging deep on this one, though. Stay tuned. Stay safe.